Hallelujah. Good evening, neighbor one. God bless you. Good morning to some, whoever you're viewing us from. We thank God for you joining us. Hallelujah. These amazing 31 days. Tonight, we're going to close out, but we're going to introduce an incredible blessing that I believe is going to begin to just unleash some things in your life for this year. But first, before I go further, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for taking this journey with me, my wife, Pastor April, and the Sons of God Embassy. Thank you for all of you that were fasting, that, that, that are committed to the first fruit of fasting, first fruit of time, and first fruit in your finances. I know that God is going to bless you tremendously. And I know that you have been blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by these teaching, because we're getting emails, we're getting texts, we're getting information from people, messages. God, God is just doing great things. Tonight, we're going to deal with a subject tonight. And again, tonight, my teaching is coming from the perspective of the blood. Okay. Um, now, if you have not already ha uh, uh, got your communion uh, ready, please have your communion ready, because at the end of the teaching, we're going to go into a communion and initiate this blessing because it is the mystery that's surrounded of, 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 about the communion. So tonight's teaching is the blood and the body. So it's around the communion, but it's a, it's a perspective from the blood. And I pray tonight that it uh, unlocks some things in you and uh, initiate some things in you, because um, I, again, I'm learning from the blood and, and I was taught this way from the blood and reaching from the blood and now into eternity, bringing into time. So tonight we're going to teach that, that mystery in Jesus' name today, that mystery that was found in John 6 and 53 through 56. Blitz, if you would grab that for me, John 6, 53 through 56. We're going to unlock this mystery tonight and then we're going to go into this powerful uh, blessing of this breakthrough revelation. And I believe that many of you uh, are going to receive some incredible healings, um, deliverance tonight. I believe many of you are going to receive an uh, impartation for revelation to just continue to flow like a river in your life throughout this year, because it's going to activate something that I believe that many do not know that's concerning this and why God, why Jesus said this. And, and so again, we're going to come from the perspective of the blood. Now, Blitz, I want you to read the NLT version and prophet is, if you would give me the revelation 13, eight, the NLT version. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to do this, but I want to pray before they do that. I just want to invite the Holy spirit um, right here where I am and right where you are so that he can create an atmosphere with the blood so that you can receive what God wants to release through you through the prayer or activation at the end. Okay, so just join me by faith wherever you are in Jesus' mighty name. So Father, we thank you tonight. We're so grateful for the 31 days that you are uh, beckon us to sow to you. We are grateful, Father, that we, we, we have sown into the blood and partner with the blood. And so now I decree and declare that that climate, that atmosphere that we have built over these 31 days, that tonight it would impart to each one that's watching me tonight in a very unusual way, that the blood would begin to awaken, unlock, begin to remove, begin to, uh, begin to wash so that the Holy Spirit glory to God, can touch each individual in a very unusual way according to the law of the blood and the law of the spirit. I invite glory to God, the angels of God, to be dispatched around the world, wherever they're watching me from tonight, that the climate of heaven will become their climate. The peace of heaven shall become their peace. The healing of heaven shall become their healing. The breakthrough of heaven shall become their breakthrough. And I decree that which happened in heaven shall happen at their house tonight. I now decree that everyone that's watching will be a perfect candidate for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the blood simultaneously tonight, causing them to step into a realm that they have never stepped in before, neither anyone in the lineage. I thank you, Lord, and I give your name glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Okay, so let's dive in this to this tonight. Let's unlock this mystery that confused even the people that were standing around Jesus, that some of them turned away from him and walked away because they didn't simply understand what Jesus was saying to them. Let's take a look at this. John 6, 53 through 56. Let's go, Blitz. So Jesus said again, I tell you the truth. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. But anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise that person at the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Mm. Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Okay, now, Bliss, if you would, do me a favor, drop down to verse number 60 and read that. Many of his disciples said, this is very hard to understand. How can anyone accept it? And verse 61. Jesus was aware that his disciples were complaining. So he said to them, does this offend you? Go ahead. Then what will you think if you see the son of man ascend to heaven again? Wow. Praise God. Okay. Now, as you can see, this even offended and even confused the disciples who was walking with Jesus because they simply did not know what Jesus was saying. And so many people thought he was teaching cannibalism because they know what the law was saying where you say when, when something is sacrificed, number one, you shouldn't drink the blood. Uh, that's what Moses, that's what he constructed Moses, that's what he instructed Moses to do. Do not, my, my God and Jesus, might say, drink the blood from that sacrifice. So when Jesus said this, it confused the disciples and even teachers up to this day even think that this is dealing with cannibalism, but it's not. And we're gonna, tonight we're going to unlock this mystery and show you what Jesus really was saying to the disciples and what he's saying to us tonight. And again, keep in mind, we are coming from the perspective of the blood, okay? In Jesus' mighty name. Okay, Revelation 13 and 8, what does it say, uh, uh, Providence? Revelation 13 and 8 reads, And all the people who belong to this world worship the beast. They are the ones whose names were not written in the book of life that belonged to the lamb who was slaughtered before the world was made. Okay, so the lamb was slaughtered. This is our foundation scripture family. You know, as you've been following this teaching, you read my book, you know that it's the foundation of scripture. So look now, Revelation 13 and 8 says that the lamb was slaughtered when? Before the foundation of the world. Okay, now. Now, the lamb was slaughtered before the foundation of the world. Jesus now is, 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 is preparing his disciples, and he's trying to introduce something to them or trying to bring them into another dimension so that they can easily have what he's walking in. So he introduced something that's very powerful. And if you and I pull back the scale from my eyes, we can see exactly what Jesus is saying. In verse 53, it says this. Look what he says in verse 53. He says this, very powerful. He says in 53, he said, then Jesus said unto the very, very, I said to you, except you eat my flesh, my flesh, and drink my blood, you have no life in me or no eternal life in me, in you. This is what he's saying to them. So really what Jesus was introducing them to was not cannibalism, but he was trying to invite them into a eternal, a eternal announcement that took place in eternity. What was the eternal announcement they was trying to do? Okay, now, according to Revelation 13 and 8, the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. Now, what's standing in front of them is that lamb that was slain in eternity. So what he's doing is trying to wake them up and bring them into a fellowship that will cause them to walk into, into time with a blessing that was done in eternity. Okay, let me show you what I'm talking about. So Jesus said, eat my flesh, okay, and drink my blood, or eat my body, 
or eat me, my flesh. Let's find out what his flesh is, okay? Uh, Blitz, get me John 1 and 4, and prophets, get me Matthew 4 and 4, okay? He said, eat my flesh. Now, this is a very strong statement, my God. But what Jesus is trying to do is introduce something that would change the life of those that's walking with him. And tonight is going to change our life. It's going to change our life because we're going to activate this blessing in our life. Okay, he said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. What is his flesh? Let's find out what it is. John 1 and 4, what does it say, uh, bliss? In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Keep going. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Uh -huh. Keep going. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that uh -huh. all men through him might believe. Go he ahead. was not... He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Go ahead. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Uh-huh. Keep going. He, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Okay. Now he drop down to verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father. Wow. Full of grace and truth. My God. Hold that thought right there, Blitz. Hold that thought right there, John 1 and 14. Now, uh, prophetess, read Matthew 4 and 4. Matthew 4 and 4 reads, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Hold that thought. Now, let's read John 1 and 14 one more time. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. Only begotten of what? The Father. Now, prophetess, one more time. Matthew 4 and 4. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So what Jesus was introducing them to or inviting them to do was not eat his flesh, but eat the living word that had became flesh. Yes. He was telling them, don't eat this. Do you not know what's in front of you? I am the word of God. I'm inviting you to prophetically, by faith, consume the word that you have fled from. Jesus was introducing or trying to invite them into a communion with the word, which is he, and with the blood, which is he's carrying. He wasn't telling them to eat him physically or drink the blood physically. He was inviting them into communion. You need to consume this word. And we're going to see how powerful this is. He was inviting them into an eternal order that, that can come into time. If we, if we commune with this now, what we do, whenever you take communion, that's why we're closing out with communion tonight. Your communion need to be understood that the representation of the body that you're eating is not Jesus' body, it's, his, it's the word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Yes, glory, glory. Hallelujah. So in other Amen. Words, when you're doing communion, you're not consuming Jesus' body, you're cons consuming God's word. That's what he, this is what he was inviting them to. He wasn't talking about cannibalism. He said, y'all need to consume this because y'all have fled from this. 
Let me show you what I'm talking about. Prophetess, give me, uh, 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 give me uh, Jeremiah, um, give me Jeremiah 15, verse 15 through, six, 15 through 16. You have to understand uh, uh, and hold that right there and uh, blitz, give me Isaiah 53 and 6. So what Jesus was doing was really introducing communion. He was trying to bring them into a fellowship that you need to return to the fellowship of the word and you need to return to the fellowship of the blood because both of these address was in eternity. And if you're going to shape time, if you're going to change time, if you're going to affect time, you need to consume, you need to partner with, you need to commune with what is eternity, what actually created you. Now is black standing in front of you, and you need to consume it on a daily basis. Praise God. He was inviting them to fellowship in communion, I want you to write this definition down about communion because this is a blessing. In the Greek, the in the Greek, the definition of communion means to partnership. Okay, and get the second definition. It means to fellowship. It means to be intimate, and it and it means participation. I'm gonna say that again. One, it means partnership. What did we do this year? We partner with the blood. My God, communion means partnership. And communion also means fellowship. So what in essence, what Jesus was trying to do to the disciples was bring them into the fellowship of the word and the blood. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Why? Why? Because he knew that, the, that, that in time, Time had changed some things that eternity was, was, had already determined for everyone on the planet. So the only way they could get by was to fellowship with the word and the blood and enter into communion, and it would change your life forever. Because he knew that at, at, when we sin, we left the word and the blood. Let's take a look at this. Uh, Blitz, what does Isaiah 53 and 6 say? All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Wow. So we all have what? Gone astray. So when Jesus is standing in front of the disciples, it is the invitation family to return to the eternal order of the blood that was slain and the lamb that was slain in where? Eternity. He was trying to bring them back into fellowship. And this is what blew my mind. The Lord said, look, he said, I introduced this to my church first. He said, because look, the disciples represent what? The body of Christ. They represent the what? The first believers. And he said to me, son, get ready, because there's about to be a, 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 a unusual fellowship hit the body of Christ. And he said, those that don't understand what I'm presenting to them, he said, just like now with my teaching, there are some people offended by the blood because they look at the blood as witchcraft. They look at it as cannibalism, but they don't understand it is an invitation to fellowship with an eternal order that gave birth to you. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. See, communion Hallelujah. is stronger than what we think. Communion, we think, you think we're just consuming Jesus' body. No, you are consuming prophetically the word of God. Hallelujah. It says in John 1 14, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So that flesh, that word is standing in front of them, inviting them to re-enter the fellowship of an order that gave birth to them. Let's look at the origin of the word, okay? Uh, 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 Prophet, just give me John 1 and 1, please. John 1 and 1. Uh, let's hold on, hold on to your scripture. John 1 and 1. What does it say, uh, 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 Prophet? John 1 and 1. Yes. John 1 and 1 read, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Wow. Now, in the beginning was the what? Word. 
So now that's why Matthew 4 and 4 says that man should not live by what? Bread alone. Okay? So the bread that we equate with Jesus' body is really not what Jesus was bringing us to. He, when he say bread, he's talking about word. He's not talking about bread. He's saying prophetically eat the word, consume the word, and consume that, that order of that word, which is an eternal order. That's what he was trying to introduce them to, and that's what he's trying to introduce us to tonight, that we are to enter, enter into this eternal fellowship. Bring that fellowship into time. And tonight we're going to look at how to do it, but we there's a way that we can do and receive. My God, we can receive the same blessing that's in that body, which is the word, which is in that blood, which is his life. We can receive that now in time. And we don't have to wait to go and go into to hallelujah to heaven. We can have it now, not the sweet by and by. We can walk in an eternal order here. Praise God. Hallelujah. We just have to be understanding. We have to be consistent and we have to pursue. Okay. Let's take a look at it. Okay. Bliss. Now go ahead with your scripture. Isaiah 53 and 6 is the last one you gave me. Yes, read it one more time, okay? All we like sheep have gone astray. We okay. have turned everyone to his own way. You see that? Now, what Jesus is doing in this instance, Sam, family, he's trying to return us back to the way that we departed from. One of the things that God said to me when I started writing the second book, he said, there must be a turning. He said, there must be a turning that many, he said, when Jesus came and him and John preached the same message, you must understand repentance is more than just say, I'm sorry, or, or uh, enter into this godly sorrow. It means turning, turning away. Okay. So Isaiah said, we all went astray and turned from the way. What way did we turn from? We turned from our origin of birth, the blood and the word. Hallelujah. Praise God. But we can return tonight. Bless the lamb. We can activate this blessing tonight. And that's what we're going to activate tonight. Because I want you to see the power in communion. That communion should introduce us into a dimension that Jesus was saying to the disciples. Communion is not designed just, just for a casual moment. No, communion was designed to reintroduce us back to the eternal order of the blood and the word. Amen. Wow. In fact, I'm about to make a statement. Communion really wasn't even trying to be focused on Jesus. It was being focused on who Jesus was. Who was Jesus? He was the word in flesh form. Glory to God. Yes. Communion is higher than what we, you see? Why, why did he give up the blood? Okay, now let's take a look at this. Okay, uh, uh let's go to Genesis 14. Let's go to Genesis 14. Uh, prophet, hold that scripture right there. Let's go to Genesis 14 and, and, and let's let's see the power of this, this communion. Let's see the power of this day so that you will see that communion is greater than what we what, what we understand. What Jesus was doing was introducing us to an eternal order that will return us to our sonship, okay? All right, uh, Blitz, when you get to Genesis 14, go to verse number 18, okay? Now, now this is the first, okay? Uh, um, um, whenever you want to see something or understand something, you, you should always go uh, to the first place it was mentioned, okay? And it will give you a great understanding of what God is doing, okay? Now, we see Jesus standing before the disciples, introducing them to communion. And they was offended. And the Lord said to me, that's how it's going to be. He said, when the eternal order starts speaking, when the eternal order starts revealing itself, 
it would even offend those who've been walking with me sometime. My God. And, and it will find them very difficult to comprehend. But I'm trying to take the church to a higher dimension. And that's what God is trying to do now. He's trying, that's why he's bringing us into fellowship with the blood. And those of you that have been doing it, you must continue. Because there's a dimension that's going to unleash. Just like last night, we learned that we're going to receive a blood armor. Where the ones who's offended by this blood teaching, they won't walk in that blood armor. But God is counting on you to continue so he can dress you properly. So that you can walk in that eternal order, destroying everything thing in time that's trying to disrupt God's plans. Glory, 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 glory. Yes. Praise yes. God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. You see, and even the disciples was offended. And there are people going to be offended when we start teaching this, when we start spreading this, because the, again, some see blood teaching as witchcraft sorcery. But it's God introducing an eternal order that gave birth to everything on the planet. Everything came through the blood. Revelation 13 and 8. Now Jesus is trying to introduce it in John. Now watch this. In Genesis 14, verse 18. Go ahead, Bliss. Read till I tell you to stop. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. And he was the priest of the most high God. And he blessed him and said, blessed be Abram of the most high God, possessor <laughs> of heaven and earth. And blessed be the most high God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithe of all. Okay. Now, what did Mir Kills in that ball? The uh, prophet is giving me uh, Hebrews 7 and start reading that verse number one for me. Okay? Now, Mir Kills in that ball, what? Bread and wine. What is bread and wine? Communion. Hello? Amen. Yes. And now, watch this. When Abraham consumed the bread and wine, he went to another dimension. My God, in Jesus' mighty name. Well, so the first place that communion is seen in the Bible is in Genesis 14. It's the first place that communion is really mentioned in the Bible. Now, watch this. Melchizedek, we need to find out who he is. Okay, Hebrews 7 and 1, what does it say, Providence? Hebrews 7 and 1 reads, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. Go ahead. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Keep going. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continuously. So we see now in, in Hebrews 7, Paul answers who Melchizedek is. He's Jesus. He's Jesus Christ. And he's now meeting with Abraham in the Old Covenant, and introduces communion in the Old Covenant. He meets with Abraham, who is a businessman. So the first communion unlocks the business in you. It unlocks the wealth in you. Hallelujah. After Abraham has communion with him, he says, blessed be Abraham, possessor of heaven and earth. Guess what happened? Now, after communion, his authority goes to another level. Abraham's authority goes to another level because he had communion with Jesus Christ. Melchizedek is Jesus Christ. I could go through other scriptures and prove it in Jesus' mighty name, but we don't have time tonight because I want to focus on communion, how powerful communion is, the blood and the body tonight, okay? Now, let's go back. So we see the first place that it introduces itself, the first place that God has communion with man is in, it's in Genesis 14, and it's the first place, incidentally, where Abraham gives tithes. So that's before the law. We don't have time to fight 
with that and all that. But tithe was introduced in communion. In the climate of communion of the blood and the body. Oh, glory to God. Glory. You see that? So tight for its atmosphere was not the Levites, but it was in the atmosphere of communion and in Jesus Christ, Melchizedek, the third place where Christ first hit. That before the law. Hallelujah. This is how powerful communion is. This is when we, when we unlock tonight. We're going to activate this blessing tonight. You must understand that the blood and the body is the, is the blood that was shed before the foundation of the world and the body that John said in John 1 and John 1 and 1, where it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So when Jesus is telling them to eat his flesh and eat, drink his blood, he was not trying to eat him. He was saying, eat the word that gave birth to you and drink the blood that gave birth to you. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's the power of communion. That's the power of the blood and the body. It should never be looked at as a casual approach. It should be looked like, it should be looked upon prophetically by you and I. Um, every time we do it, I'm receiving the word that gave birth to me, and I'm drinking the life that gave birth to me. And I activate them in my life every time I fellowship, every time I partner, because communion means to partner, means to fellowship, it means to, it means to become intimate with, and it means to participate. Communion needs our participation. Let's take a look, okay? Blitz, Jeremiah 15, uh, I'm sorry, prophet, give me Jeremiah 15, verse 15 through 16, and um, um, Blitz, give me Proverbs 4, 20 through 23. <laughs> Amen. Jeremiah 15, 15 and 16 reads. Yes. O Lord, thou knowest, remember me and visit me and revenge me of my persecutors. Take me not Prophet, away. You, you broke up. Prophet, you broke up. Let's start over with that. I want, I want it to be read. I want people to hear it. You broke up. Okay. O Lord, thou knowest Remember me and visit me and revenge me of my persecutors. Take me not away in thy long suffering. Know that for thy sake, I have suffered rebuke. Thy words were found and I did eat them. What? And you did what? He did what Jeremiah said. I ate your words. Yes. <laughs> I ate your words. What happened when he ate his word? Go, prophetess. And I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Look what he said. Look what Jeremiah just said. Jeremiah said, when I consume your word, my, when I consume your word, I got a joy that I didn't have before. Mm. Family. Communion is not a casual approach. And then you're going to see in just a minute that what Jesus was trying to activate with the disciples, once we do it, do you know that you're going to get healing? You're going to get deliverance. You're going to get breakthrough on, on, because it means to fellowship. And fellowship does not mean once every first Sunday or fourth Sunday, you're going to see in just a minute. No, Jesus was trying to bring them into an eternal order that's supposed to be activated in time so that the word and the blood can eradicate and destroy what time did to our body, what time did to our conscience, what time did to our mind, what time did, what time brought in. The blood and the word is sent to move it and extract it from our life so that we can walk in that eternal order right here on the planet. Hallelujah. Yes, God. God. Hallelujah. Jesus' body never had any sickness in it. 
My God in Jesus' mighty name. His blood had no iniquity. That's what the eternal order he was trying to introduce to the disciples. And he's trying to introduce it to us tonight. And I believe, saints, we are right now on the cuff of this stepping into it. I believe it with all my heart. I believe once we do what tonight, once we activate this tonight and we do it on a continual basis, I believe that you are about to be an individual that's going to be overtaken by the word. Just like Jeremiah said, Jeremiah said, I found your word and I ate it. And when I ate it, I got joy. I didn't have that joy before I ate that word, but I got joy. Somebody is about to eat the word and you are about to have an instant healing, an instant breakthrough. You are about to have what you never had before because you're going to eat it by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory to joy. Glory to God. Yes, God. It is a real lining that Jesus was inviting them to in John 6 and 53. It was a real lining. And that's what's going to happen tonight. That's what's going to happen. We're about to have a real lining of the word which is his body, hello, and the life, which is his blood. Glory to God. Let's take a look at this. Okay, Proverbs 4, verse 20 through 23, uh, 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 Blitz. My son. And, uh, and, uh, prophet is getting me Matthew 6 and 11 uh, in Jesus' mighty name. Proverbs 4, 20 through 23. Yes. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Mm. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Health to what? All their flesh. Help. Look what he's saying about the word. My God, are y'all hearing this? This is what Jesus was trying to teach to in John 6 and 63. I'm the lamb that was slain. I'm here to return to you what you left in the garden. You left a perfect body and you left a perfect DNA. I come to return it to you. But all I need is your fellowship, your participation, your partnership, and your intimacy. And I can give it right back to you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, how often should we do it? Let's find out. How often should we do it? Uh, 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 what did I give you, Blitz? What did I give you? Uh, 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 give me, Matt. you can get, give me, uh, uh, what did I give you? You gave Proverbs. me. Proverbs 4, 20 through 23. Well, Blitz, get me 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26. And prophetess, get me Matthew 6 and 11. Start reading at verse number 10, please. Matthew 6, 10 and 11. Yes. 10 reads, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as uh -huh. it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. What? Give us this day our what? Daily bread. Daily bread. Do you see this? God is saying communion is not once a month. We're supposed to eat the bread, which is Jesus' body. Give us our daily bread. This is supposed to be ate every day. You're supposed to go in fellowship with this every day. But fellowship, not looking at it as the body of Jesus, but the word that became flesh. Mm. And then you're supposed to say to that word that you eat. You're supposed to speak to that word and say to that word. Now change me back to you. I activate you by faith. Because I came from you. I am the word of God as well as you. So therefore, today as I eat you, feed me. What do you say? Give me my daily bread. This supposed to be a daily event, not a once a month. Daily. We supposed to fellowship. Amen. Amen. We supposed to fellowship with the word 
Again, look at the look at the body. The body is the what? The word. What is the blood? The life. The, uh, uh, prophets, give me Leviticus 17, 11. So we supposed to fellowship with this as if this is the word. Jesus laid down his life so that the word can be consumed by us daily. Prophetically, it's supposed to be an activation every day. And when you do it, Sam family, the, the peace, the joy that you need, you will eat it. Glory to God. With the healing that you need, you will eat it. Are you hear what I'm saying? The, the breakthrough that you will need, you will eat it and drink it. And then every day you can say, that kingdom come. You can say then because you have legal right. Because now what you eat and match his kingdom. His kingdom is, his kingdom was forever established by his word. His kingdom was ever established by his word. That kingdom come that will be done. The kingdom can't come because we're not matching it because we have not consumed it. When we consume it, when we believe we're eating the word, drinking that life, that makes the kingdom come that much easier. Hallelujah. Now the kingdom can land. Hallelujah. Now the will can land. Uh, now God can land. Hallelujah. What did David say? Forever, his word is forever established in heaven. He's trying to establish it here, but we're not fellowshipping with it. Lord, Every day. Hallelujah. It's supposed to be daily. Give me my daily bread. Daily bread. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what he was trying to teach come. the children of Israel in, in the wilderness. He bought what? Bread every day. He rained what manner. He was trying to introduce them, trying to get the church ready, but the church wasn't ready. And they tried to what? Take it home? He said, look, don't take it home. He said, because if you take it home, you're going to disqualify from being fresh tomorrow. That's what we're doing now. We're holding on what God said yesterday instead of being hungry enough for what he's saying today. My God, help us. Ah, God. Glory. See, yes, Lord, I approach him every morning. I should not approach him the same way. I want my daily bread. Thank you for what you said yesterday. But what are you saying today? And when I consume that word today, I say, give me revelation of my daily bread. Hallelujah. This is the blood and the body. First Corinthians uh, 11, verse 23 through 26. What does it say, uh, uh, Bliss? For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had sucked, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. How oft? How often? And I'm, I, I got a question for everybody watching me tonight. How hungry are you to walk in this authority that the Lord is trying to present to us tonight? That what authority, Apostle, are you talking about? I'm talking about being changed right here in time and not waiting for the sweet by and by. But just like Jeremiah, just like Paul, Paul said that we are written epistles, read of men. We are the word of God, read of men. We supposed to have this on a daily basis, we call the fellowship with the body, which is the word of God. Blitz, get me um, John uh, John 6. We're going to close out in verse number uh, 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 58. Okay, prophetess, read me Leviticus 17 and 11, and then we'll close out with the prayer. My God, we're going to activate this tonight. The blood and the body, but you must stop seeing the communion as the body being the word that you're consuming 
bringing health to this body and the blood, his life, bringing God's life to that body. And we're supposed to do it daily. Don't ask for revelation if you have not consumed the word yet. Mm. Hallelujah. Come on. <laughs> I want daily bread. Come on. Okay. Uh, 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 Blitz, a prophet is what does Leviticus 17 and 11? Leviticus 17 and 11 reads, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that make it an atonement for the soul. Wow. Okay. Now, as you can see, okay, now let's get this right here. John, uh, uh, what, uh, John 5 and uh, John 5 and 58, what does it say, um, Blitz? John, John 6, 6, and 50, 6 and 58, yes. What does it say? Now watch this. This is very powerful. Okay, go ahead. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Tonight, the bread that we call the body of Christ is the word of God that is sent to give you life, that eternal status to return back to you the moment you consume it. Tonight, we're going to unlock this communion. And I want to give you the word that God gave me. The word was, if we want the body that Jesus walked in, we must see the body, not just a perfect sacrifice, but the word of God came alive to come to give us that we can consume it prophetically and that the blood is his life. And when these two, by faith, taken by us, we can now return this body back to its eternal order. What do I mean? Sickness, disease, chaos, confusion, Everything that's in your body that was picked up by time can be cast out by these two. And by the way, this also unlocks the wealth that God has put in you that you are designed to receive on the planet. Because the first person that God did communion with was Abraham. And Abraham is a businessman. The last people that Jesus do communion with was a group of preachers. So what God is doing with communion with you tonight is unlocking your business and activating your ministry, making your ministry financially efficient. Hallelujah. Tonight, I want you to grab your communion and we're going to enter into this blessing. I want you to get ready for the activation of the communion of the word and the life to become one in your life. Join me tonight. I want you to get wherever in a private place so that you can consume this. And the other thing that God gave me for you tonight that's watching me, the Lord says, start doing this daily and approach it, not the way you approached it the day prior. But approach it saying, give me my daily bread. And once you say that, make sure your hunger unlocks today and not yesterday, man. Let yesterday aspire, but consume today. Prepare. And pray this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father. I want to thank you for Jesus Christ. Jesus, thank you for John 6 and 53. I am not offended by what you offering me. Tonight, Jesus, 
I enter into partnership of your communion. I gladly consume your flesh, which is the word of God. I gladly drink your blood, which is the life of the Father. Blood of Christ, I thank you. As I consume you tonight, I activate every harvest that's in you. The life of the Father, the healing of the Father, the reconciliation of the Father, the redemption of the Father, the justification, the peace, the divine protection. And Lord Jesus, because you shed your blood, you didn't just stop there. You also gave me your flesh, to consume. Unlike my forefathers, I receive the manna from heaven and the blood. Tonight, as I partner with your body, which is the word of God, and your blood, which is the life of the Father, I unlock the communion, the partnership, the fellowship, the intimacy. And I commit from this night forward to a daily fellowship. I give you authority to unlock the business, the wealth that you did in my forefather Abraham you are now doing in my life. And as Abraham honored you, I shall do the same. So after tonight, I will release my tithe into this communion to signify my honor. And I thank you as I partner with the word and I partner with your life. I will enter into perfect communion with you. And now I give the word and the blood authority to cleanse, uproot, remove, heal, deliver from my body everything that time gave it. And tonight, I accept the eternal order back into my life where I will witness heaven coming down and the will of the Father coming down in my life, my lineage, my marriage, my business, my ministry, and my destiny. You said as often as I do it, I show forth my remembrance. Tonight, as I consume the word, calls me to remember every moment I was with you, Father, in eternity so that I can walk it out in time. I consume the flesh, which is the word of God, consuming. I consume the blood which was slain before the foundation of the world that everything came through. Now I give the blood authority to help me remember every moment I was with you, Father, in eternity, so I can do it in time. In Jesus' name, amen.
Now say these words. Body of Christ, blood of Christ, I prophetically activate you in my life. I give you authority to heal my body and bring me to a place of wholeness. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Now, while the climate is the way it is right now, I want you to put your right hand on that one thing that you believe in, new to step into it. Put your hands on it right now. Father, right now, by faith, I am agreeing with everyone who have followed the instructions of the prophet. I decree through this climate, through this communion that we just did, that they, whatever they have on their hand, they will step into immediately. And they will begin to see results immediately. I decree right now, doors opening, advancement, opportunity for the new thing that they just believe for, that there will be immediately opens right now for it. I plead the blood of Jesus upon everyone that has made this journey with us. That Father, that the communion that we just partake with would take them into the higher dimension as it did for Abraham. Now Jesus said, a greater covenant he bought us. Now we can be into the realms that he desires us to be because now we have the blood and the word returning us to that eternal order. I decree right now that the things that they have written, that the angels of the Lord will partner with them to help them to fulfill it this year. I decree this through the blood of the Lamb, and I seal it right now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. Put a praise on that, what you just received. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Thank you so much for joining us for these 31 days. I cannot tell you how excited I am and how blessed I am that many of you writing us, letting us know what is happening. Praise God in Jesus' mighty name. I know that these 31 days is an opening of the heavens that will shower down on you from days to come. I want to inspire you to sow into this atmosphere, sow into these 31 days. And name the seed a blood seed. Name the seed what? A, the blood seed. I want you. Whatever the Holy Spirit is telling you to sow, sow. In Jesus' mighty name. If you want to sow directly, there's ways you can sow directly into me. My cash app is money sign Robinson, R-O-B-E-R-S-O-N, the number 22. That's money sign Robinson. R-O-B-R-S-O-N, the number 22, that'll come directly to my cash app. Or you can go to the website. There's a tab there you can sow directly into me in Jesus' mighty name. My Zelle information is up there as well. If you want to sow into this environment, sow into what God did for 31 days, in Jesus' mighty name, I don't know a greater atmosphere than the blood. If you would bless these 31 days. And also, please send us your email. So many of you are emailing us, letting us know. I got a message just before I came to teach you from, from, from Facebook uh, about a, a day that they were blessed on. By God, we just amazing climate. Don't miss this moment to sow into it. It's an incredible atmosphere. And God bless you and thank you.
In Jesus' mighty name, we got some upcoming events. In Jesus' mighty name, again, I want to say how much I appreciate you for making this journey with me and with Pastor April and with the sons of God these 31 days. I, my God, this thing has really blessed me. If it has blessed you, please send us an email. Let us know what it has done, what the teaching has done. The Bible says in, in Revelation that they, they overcame by the blood of the, of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. Please continue to share. Um, um, and please look out. I'm, I'm going to continue to teach throughout the month. Again, uh, let me say this before I forget. I want to thank all our new subscribers. Thank you, and thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing and sharing with your family, your friends. We really appreciate it in Jesus' mighty name. We thank God for you. Hallelujah. But look out. I'll be doing some more teachings this month coming up. We're also in um, Hattiesburg, Mississippi next month. So be looking out because I I want to continue teaching some incredible things that God is saying. So please, please be on the lookout. And every time we teach, that, that notification will let you know and you can um, get the teaching. Thank you again. This is Apostle Lee Robinson uh, on behalf of my wife, Pastor April, and the sons of God. Emerson. Thank you so much for joining us for these 31 days. We love you and we appreciate you and we honor you. God bless you. Have an amazing night.